Ooh. Whoa, okay, here we go. Oh, looking at the camera. Shadow. My beard's casting a shadow. What is up everyone? It's Andy here and you haven't seen me on this channel in a while and uh, there's reasons for that. So I thought I'd come back and make my illustrious comeback with a frequently asked questions video. First question, where have you been? Um, so many of you know I started this channel, I was planning on starting this channel back in November 2021. I announced to the world on my Instagram, hey, I'm starting YouTube, Andy Neal, plus size hiker, Andy films and hikes, all that stuff. And uh, it was gonna launch it into January. Except at the beginning of January, this happened. So I went viral and things just kind of took off and I had to put time in different places. I already had some videos ready to go and I posted them and, but yeah, um, things have just been crazy and they've been even crazier the last few weeks and months as I've gone viral five times for hiking and stuff. So um, essentially I just had to kind of rearrange my priorities and I wanted to get back to the YouTube. I love doing YouTube, I love this format, um, but I had to make sure that as opportunities came my way with Instagram and TikTok, providing for my family. So that is what happened there. Next question, and it's probably the most common question I get. What do you recommend for shoes for larger plus size or fat people? Well, I don't have a specific brand I always go with. Um, there are different strokes for different folks, as I like to say. Um, but I do have several suggestions I would like to, to give to you if you're looking for a good hiking shoe. Um, one second. So within hiking shoes, there's kind of three different types you're gonna find. You're gonna find your trail runners, your hiking shoes, and your hiking boot. As far as hiking boot, I love the um, Columbia Newton Ridge 2s. They, uh, I actually wore these on my first ever modeling shoot with Columbia. Um, they're amazing shoes. They give me some great ankle support. They fit really well. Um, the, I have put probably a thousand miles on this tread and it's been like amazing. It's just now starting to give way here. Um, it, it's just now starting. I mean, I've had these since October of last year, but wearing them like crazy. Next up is your hiking shoe. This is the Merrill Moab, probably one of the most uh, most famous or most uh, most often purchased hiking shoes. Um, they're a little they're a little heavier, um, but they're really good. They're gonna give you the support you need if you like a low top. Um, this is dirty. I, I hope that's dirt on there. I really hope that's dirt on there. Little. And next is your trail runner. I do love a good trail runner. Um, especially if it's gonna be more of a flat trail, if it's gonna be less rocky. I do like the Hoka Challenger ATR 5s. They have the ATR 6s now, I do love these shoes. Um, they have the extra cushion there, which really helped me as a bigger person, um, keep my feet going. I wear these also if, um, not only on flat, but like if I know it's gonna be particularly rocky with these shoes, um, it gives me good padding, it helps uh, me not to roll my ankles. Uh, but basically Hoka, Columbia, and Merrill are the shoes that I wear. I do have some ultra tips and some ultra lone peaks I, I, I wear in different situations, but really you gotta, you gotta work, find what works for you hiking shoe wise. My suggestion is to go to REI, get a fitting. I know it's kind of a pain, but you know what? It, it's worth it. And the thing is with REI is if you go and you get your shoes there and they end up not working out, you can return them within a year if you are a member of the co-op. So totally worth it. Next question. What is your favorite Disney movie? Pinocchio, it's always been Pinocchio. I love Pinocchio. Pinocchio is amazing. Don't at me. Next question. Where do you find your hiking clothes that fit you? Um, well, uh, a lot of different places. Many of you know the number one place I find my hiking clothes is Columbia Sportswear. Columbia Sportswear is one of the first to put out plus size outdoor gear. Um, they have up to 6X for men, up to 3X for women. That is changing. They're getting more expansive in sizing and everything else. I, Full disclosure, I have modeled for Columbia. You go to a Columbia 
uh, store or outlet and they have an extended size section, you're probably gonna see my picture. You get a coupon from Columbia, you're probably gonna see my picture on that coupon. Get on their website, you're likely to see me. I've also done lots of social media. I'm getting ready to do another social media campaign with Columbia here pretty soon. Uh, but I was using Columbia and wearing Columbia far before uh, I ever worked for them because there, that's all there was. Now there are other brands that are coming out there, Outdoor Research, I know Older Apparel for Women. Um, there's a lot more brands that are getting ready to roll out plus size clothing for outdoor people and hikers. Um, but that's what I use, I wear primarily. Um, just cause it's always been there. And the, 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 the selection's there, the options are there for me. So Columbia Sportswear. What is your favorite hike? Um, I can't name just like one hike. My favorite trail is the Pacific Crest Trail. It goes from Mexico to Canada. Obviously I have not hiked the whole thing. I have not done a continuous through hike. I've only done a few backpacking trips in my life. But um, I just love that trail because of the diversity on it. I can go in California and hike a desert section. Um, here in Southern Oregon, there's more foresty sections. There's more arid sections. Uh, I hike through Crater Lake National Park. My favorite section of that is actually from the entrance of Crater Lake National Park to the rim and back. I love that trail. It's an out and back 12 miles totally worth it if you ever get a chance if you're in Cray Lake National Park do that little stretch of it it's so much fun will you come and hike blank so I get this question a lot about hey Andy will you come to New Hampshire and hike with me will you come to Switzerland and hike the trail here will you come here and there I know everyone wants me to come and hike in their hometowns and, 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 and show the amazing hiking that's going on all over the world uh, a couple things is I do love Southern Oregon I live in Southern Oregon and I do have a family I have to provide for them I have uh, three kids adopted from foster care two with special needs so I when I'm gone it has to be very well planned um, I try not to be gone too long or too far. Um, even when I went to Boston, that was a little bit of a, a stretch. Um, that's changing. We're, we're, we're getting the help we need with that as my, as my career is taking off. But um, I would love to be everywhere. Um, I'm actually talking with um, an organization right now to possibly lead a trip to Iceland. Some hiking there. So uh, it's coming, it's coming. I'm kind of getting my feet wet in all this influencer stuff. Andy, how has your life changed since becoming an influencer and going viral? Um, that is a really, really great question. Um, I say um a lot. So you see, I always loved social media. Social media was always my jam. Back in the live journal, Zanga and MySpace days, I love social media. Uh, I met my wife on MySpace back in 2006. We got married in 2007. We've been together for 16 years. I love social media. And when I left my old career, and got into media production. The reason I was hired was because I knew so much about social media. I was handling the social media for uh, different organizations I was working with, for the production company I was working with, I was handling, handling their social media. Uh, I had a podcast called The Decast where I would talk about Disney. I love Disney and I wanted to be a Disney influencer. Um, there's a lot of amazing Disney influencers and I started a Disney podcast, became friends with a lot of these Disney influencers, got to know them, would go to Anaheim in LA and hang out with them. Um, I just could never break through um, that. As much as I love Disney, as you guys obviously can see and know, um, to be a Disney influencer, either you have to have something really dynamic and different from everyone else, or you need to live in Orlando or Southern California. That's just the name of the game because that's where all the ride premieres and movie premieres and everything else happens. You need to be in those places. Um, and so I, I was always trying to break into that. I, I The idea of being an influencer and being a movie reviewer and, and, and doing online things of that nature really appealed to me, even as a filmmaker, as someone who wanted to still make films and do things like that. Um, the flexibility is what's always appealed to me, especially when I have our kids adopted from foster care to a special needs, just knowing that some days I need to just be with my family and I need to not you know have a meeting I have to go to or you know, that sort of thing. Sometimes I just need to be home or I need to take some extended time. I just need that flexibility. Whereas, you know, I have these, would have these um, periods of intense work. You know, sometimes when I go travel for work now, it's intense, you know, full week, work, 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 work. And I come home, I can take a week off. You know, I just worked 100 hours last week. Now I can just take some time this week and chill. Uh, so how my life has changed, it's changed a couple ways. I have a lot of flexibility now. Um, I have some financial freedom that I didn't have before. I get to make content that I love and really look towards my future of myself and my family and be able to provide for us. During the pandemic, 
Um, things were really rough there for a while. I was working as a production assistant before the pandemic, uh, making videos and doing some freelancing stuff that all dried up. I was actually supposed to work as an associate producer on a reality television show in Boston. Um, like the week the pandemic went down, obviously that went away. Things got really scary there for a little bit. We had bill collectors coming to our door, didn't know we were, what we were gonna do. Began, oh gosh, oh man. Began finding some work for editing and podcasting for people and that turned into some more work and that turned into um, me starting the Hiker Podcast because I had really fallen in love with hiking the year before and there was really not a whole lot else to do. So I was hiking and I was putting my pictures out there and I decided to start the Hiker Podcast. I got really into the outdoor and hiking community and what I started putting out there started resonating with people and I started putting that on Instagram and it just kind of blew up uh, this year in 2022. So things have definitely changed. Um, I went from, you know, 5,000 in January of this year, beginning of this year, 5,000 Instagram followers, which is still a lot, to I'm at 171,000 now, which is insane to me. Um, but I always wanted to be an influencer since 2015 when I first knew what it was because I just love the idea of being creative and having flexibility and working for myself. Um, and even when I work for other companies or organizations, um, they still want my flair. There's been several times where I, I pitched something since becoming, you know, more of a full-time influencer over the last few months. I pitched something and they've come back to me and they're like, oh, this is really good if we were having you just produce a straight commercial, but we want this to have your unique stamp on it. We want this to have your humor on it. We want this to say Andy and our company, which I thought was really, really cool. I really enjoyed and loved that. Um, so yeah, um, that, that's been that's been really, really cool. Uh, my life has changed a lot and I have you all to thank for it. And um, I definitely am an outdoor influencer, but I also want to talk about culture and pop culture and things of that nature. And uh, I just want to be me, someone who loves the outdoors, who loves entertainment, who loves pop culture, who wants to talk about mental health and inclusion and environmental um, sustainability and things of that nature. And uh, yeah, that's me. My life has definitely changed for the better. Can you talk about why you always give land acknowledgements on all of your posts? So if you don't know what I'm talking about on all my Instagram posts, I do my best to acknowledge where that picture was taken, that it belongs, that that land belongs to someone else, that it belongs to the indigenous people who came before us, uh, what tribes, um, what First Nation people were here before us, because we just have to come to the realization that if you live in North America, um, we are working and recreating on stolen land. There were people here before us and my my ancestors, my European ancestors came here and colonized and took that land from them uh, illegally. And it's very much the least I can do to acknowledge the people who are stewards of the land I am recreating on, I am working on, I am playing on, um, I am living on, who were stewards of this land for millennia before me. So that's, that's why I do it. I have a hard time finding motivation to hike. What would you say to someone who's hiking for the first time? Um, I totally feel you. What I always like to tell people is if you um, are big like me and you're just trying to find the motivation to get out, don't try to conquer the Appalachian Trail on the first go around. Go and just walk to the end of your block and back. Go get the mail. You know, do those things. You know, get 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 your shoes on, get going and then work your way up, then walk around the block, then find a path, a walking path in a park near your home. If that's accessible, if that's safe, walk there. Work your way up. You don't need to conquer miles and miles and miles in the first day, quarter mile, eighth of a mile. That's fine too. Do what works for you. It's your body, you know your body. Don't compare yourself to what else is going on on Instagram and TikTok. Um, be you, do what works for you and no one else. How do you deal so well with all the haters and people who slide into your DMs? So I've talked a lot about on my Instagram how I get a lot of comments from people and honestly, it is a little demoralizing at times because you have people who are really actually very well intentioned. They're like, hey, you know, I'm I'm a trainer and I see you doing all this stuff and you're not losing weight. Um, you need to do this and that. You need to do my, you know, 10 step program or 90 day challenge or this, that or the other thing. And honestly, I think probably like, three quarters of these people are very much well-intentioned. They want to help. They don't realize how toxic and horrible the things they say are and how harmful it's been to so many people. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely tough to 
to deal with it. But you know what? I, I just try to remember I, I am helping people. I am encouraging people to go out and enjoy life, um, you know, advocate for their mental health, inclusion for all people, no matter who you are, who you love, what size you are. Um, everyone belongs out in the outdoors. Everyone belongs on a plane. Everyone belongs, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, it, it does get to me sometimes because, you know, I've always been big. I've been big my entire life. And I remember being made fun of as a kid because I was bigger. And it really kind of gets, it gets tough sometimes. But um, delete and block, honestly, is the best advice I can give. And a lot of people, they, 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 they don't know me. They don't know the struggles I, I've been through. I, I have a lot of people come and say, hey, I see you going to the gym and hiking all the time, but you don't see me losing any weight. Do you have, do you have some other um, deal going on? Or, or, or the, the best one is, I think you're just trying to stay fat so you get a following. So you do all this exercise, but you're eating you know, 20,000 calories a day so you can stay fat. And I'm like, really? Really? That's, really? Wow. wipe the dirt off my shoulder that's all i can do but guys thank you so much for um coming here checking out my youtube video i'm going to be posting here more consistently there's going to be a little bit of a branding change here um this was going to be andy neal plus size hiker this is just going to be andy films and hikes now i'm going to talk about films and hiking and culture and outdoors and environmentalism and this is just going to be a place i can put my stuff because it's me and i am not just a plus size hiker i am not just a disney nerd i am not just a dad i am not just a husband i am all of those things and that makes me so that's what this youtube channel is going to reflect um if you want more from me check out my instagram and my tiktok and uh yeah we'll see you later bye